Good afternoon, everyone. It's Wednesday afternoon. It is January the 29th. It is a hump day that has featured a lot of clouds, uh, a little bit of sunshine. Uh, we did see at least a brief appearance by some sunshine earlier in the day, but since then clouds have moved back in and temperatures really, out of, as has been the case since Sunday, have gotten not much warmer than the mid 30s this afternoon. It's really been, the last four days, our temperature range has been between about 30 and 36 degrees. Over the course of four days, the temperature hasn't moved more than six degrees. That's a little bit uh, of an amazing statistic unto itself to have that long of a period of time and the temperature be that tight of a gradient over that period of time. Uh, there is some slightly warmer air on the horizon. We'll talk about that coming up. Also, I have some information on a satellite collision that potentially could occur in just a few hours. I'll let you know what I know and um, how the whole thing is potentially going to play out. And of course, we have the extended forecast looking into and through the weekend. First though, how about a little music? Good brother Earl, skipping Jeff, playing the tunes, spinning the tunes. Pittsburgh weather now with the photos. And that is visual proof that we do get occasionally some sunshine in western Pennsylvania. The photo before was of the legendary Troy Polamalu, who I predict will get inducted, or at least it will have his nomination validated and will be inducted in the Professional Football Hall of Fame with the upcoming class. Uh, so we'll wait and get the official word uh, that will be coming down, I believe, on Saturday. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this Wednesday afternoon edition of Whiteboard Weather. Folks checking in from all across the area, I do appreciate it. Uh, thanks for taking a few minutes to tune in this afternoon to get your no-hype, simply accurate weather forecast and a uh, little extra information for you today. Let me get you that cool information about the satellite. Um, if you haven't heard this story, there are, um, there are a couple of satellites that are orbiting uh, Earth, and there are, this is an interesting statistic, there are 1,500 active satellites that are orbiting the planet. In addition to those 1,500 active satellites, there are 3,000 dead satellites. They serve no purpose anymore. Um, they're pretty much defunct. Two of these defunct satellites are on a potential collision course um, over the next few hours. And that collision is projected to potentially take place uh, about 560 miles above Pittsburgh. Straight up 500 plus miles, there could be a high-speed collision coming up in a little over three hours. Here's the little uh, information as to what I know based on what the really smart people know who track these things. The potential satellite collision is scheduled, if it's going to happen, at 639. They have this down to the minute. This is some, some high-tech stuff. 639 this evening, two defunct satellites could potentially collide. This will occur or 
get close to occurring, 560 miles straight up from Pittsburgh. Now they have the range based on their latest information between 50 and 90 feet. That's about how close they're going to come if they don't collide. So they're gonna be as close as 50 feet apart and if there's any obviously deviation from that particular track, which there could be, that's a margin of error, they will collide. The odds of a collision are one in 20. If the satellites do collide over the Pittsburgh region in a few hours, the result will be debris, lots and lots of debris in space. No local impact here, it's just gonna be happening above us, but the problem is with, you're saying not space debris, not a big deal, uh, who cares? Well, the problem here is if they do collide, the resulting space debris, which could be some very small pieces of these satellites or very large pieces, will continue to kind of aimlessly orbit around Earth. They could, and they'll be moving at a high rate of speed, over 30,000 miles an hour, they could potentially collide with an active satellite, and then that would be a problem because you would damage active satellite. So um, we'll see if this collision occurs coming up at 639 this evening, 560 miles straight up from Pittsburgh. So that is what I know about the satellite collision. They're moving again at 33,000 miles an hour. So that's going to be high speed if it happens. If it doesn't happen, it's going to be a really close shave. Between 50 and 90 feet apart is how close they could pass to one another. All right, so now you have all the information about the potential satellite collision. Uh, a couple quick birthdays before we get into the weather information. Um, born on this day, Sarah Gilbert, the actress. Tom Selleck, the actor. And Oprah Winfrey is 66 years old today. And the 25th president of the United States, Bill McKinley, William McKinley, he's one of my favorites, the reason being he's a graduate of Allegheny College as well. Obviously, he went on to have much more success than another Allegheny College graduate, but Bill McKinley, born on this day. National Corn Chip Day today and National Puzzle Day today as well. All right, let's get to some weather information. Flip it around. This is what we're feeling outside right now. 35, <clears throat> the current temperature, Phil overlooking all the proceedings here this afternoon. Cloudy skies, north wind at five miles an hour. We're gonna hear from Phil this weekend. <laughs> Let's take a look at the surface map. Break it down for you. We'll start with um, the current setup. Uh, we have this sort of weak boundary across the area, not doing much of anything. All the moisture is really trapped up here in through, <clears throat> excuse me, the southeastern United States. Tomorrow morning, this is first thing Thursday morning. Take note of this. This is just a very weak disturbance. It's going to be moving through parts of uh, the Smoky Mountains and down in through parts of West Virginia. You'll notice most of the moisture, albeit very light, limited moisture, stays south. Some of this moisture could get pulled up into some of the higher elevations, maybe even parts of Fayette or Westmoreland County not out of the realm of possibility that you could get a spot of some drizzle tomorrow afternoon. This is the afternoon setup. You can again see here's a little bit of that moisture kind of leaking its way north um, to a point and then it gets cut off. Very limited moisture. So um, part of the area south and east could get maybe a sprinkle or even a passing flurry at some point tomorrow afternoon. Hashtag not a big deal. Um, here we go, Friday morning, high pressure, keep things dry uh, as we head through the day. And then as we head into the weekend, here is what we got cooking. You heard about this. Low pressure, coastal low pressure will be developing somewhere off the southeast. Then it's going to track up the eastern seaboard. It's going to be far enough removed from us that it's really not going to have much of an impact. It'll throw clouds our way. But most of the precipitation, the steadiest stuff, is going to be probably within 90 to 100 miles of the coast. We will have our chance of precipitation this weekend because of just the overall, what's called a trophy weather pattern. You have these dips in the jet stream, and you can see sort of these dips in some of these lines. Our precipitation chance will come from that and not this. So nothing of a widespread nature. 
um, locally. Just some scattered showers, maybe a few flurries will mix in. A dreary weekend to be sure, but certainly nothing significant or nothing highly impactful for us this weekend. All the impacts from this will again be within probably 80 to 100 miles of the coast. That's where things will be more significant and impactful. Very quickly, I'll show you this. I always like to show you these long range maps. This is February 7th or 3rd through the 7th. So the first five to seven days of February, you can still see above normal temperatures across the eastern third of the country. Then you see near to below normal temperatures building to our west. I do think after the first five to seven days of February, some of this air is going to make its way east. So I do expect we're going to get into a colder pattern for probably a longer period of time, maybe the second and third week of February, but the first few days, maybe the first week, look to have temperatures near to above normal. And then I do think it will turn colder the middle part of the month. So that is a look at your maps and a quick preview of the long range outlook as well. Um, now we'll get over to the whiteboard and I'll break it down for you in day by day form. As I flip the camera around, we will start with my friends in Punxsutawney. If you or someone you know is heading to Punxsutawney, first there's your sunset sunrise times. Don't want to forget those. A lot of people like to get those every day. Punxsutawney, 7.30 on Sunday morning when Phil comes out to make its pro his prognostication. 28 degrees at Gobbler's Knob. Cloudy skies cannot rule out a flurry or two. Uh, so that's the setup when Phil comes out to make his prognostication. Speaking of which, his history of prognostications, 104 times he has seen his shadow, 19 times he has not seen his shadow. He did not see it last year, but the percentages are way in the column of seeing his shadow. He sees it over 90% of the time, so uh, that's just a little bit of Phil's shadow slash no shadow history his prognostication track record tonight 25 degrees i do think we'll get some breaks in the cloud deck i'll call it partly cloudy uh, as we head down through later this evening and overnight then clouds will thicken back up tomorrow 37 a mainly cloudy sky again a spit of some drizzle in the afternoon the best chance of that happening is south and east Places like maybe out toward Ligonier, maybe down toward Connellsville, certainly out toward the Lower Highlands, and maybe even down into Garrett County, Maryland. Those would be your best chances to run across some spotty drizzle or flurry in the afternoon. Tomorrow night, lots of clouds. 26 is the low temperature. And then on Friday, gets a little milder. 40 degrees, plenty of clouds. What else is new? Heading into the weekend, Saturday, 41 overcast. I think some rain showers begin arriving in the afternoon. I think Saturday morning it's just cloudy and then as we head toward lunchtime and beyond we'll see some of those scattered and occasional rain showers taking shape and then Saturday night as the atmosphere does cool a bit I do think some light snow showers may mix in but given the fact that temperatures will be pretty much above freezing at the surface what we call those are marginal temperatures. There'll be little or no accumulation. So it'd be almost like a white rain coming down Saturday night, keeping things damp. Then on Sunday, in the morning, could be a shower or a flurry. I think it's mainly before about 9 a.m. And then just mostly cloudy through the afternoon and 42 degrees. Keep in mind, the average high is 36 degrees. And we will be near to above average every day right through Sunday, and should I also mention? Of course, I'll mention. Looking even longer range, Monday, Tuesday of next week, uh, it does look like temperatures those days will continue to climb into the 50s for the first few days of February. So that's just a, a little bit of a sneak peek, looking a little further down the line. Uh, so you are good to go. You got everything you need to know. I always ask you to please share whiteboard weather with your Facebook friends. The more you share, the more people we reach. And the more people we reach, the bigger our community 
becomes. Also visit pittsburghweathernow.com when you get the opportunity. Um, we have the merchandise store there. We have also links to all the whiteboard weather segments, the full library, weather records, uh, fun facts, educational videos. It's all there. Links to a lot of my sponsors. You can check in on the Seven Springs webcam anytime to see what's happening up in the mountains. Also, um, our all-weather wealth tips, educational. So it's really all-encompassing. Visit the website when you get a chance. And also, FYI, tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., there'll be a whiteboard weather, but it won't be as per usual. It will be from the KDKA Radio Studios. I am uh, co-hosting uh, with my friend Larry Richard tomorrow. He asked me to come in and serve as a co-host for the morning, so I will be on with Larry a little earlier, 5.30 tomorrow morning through 9 a.m., uh, and we'll try and get in our whiteboard weather segment as per usual from the KDKA radio studios tomorrow morning. So get your whiteboard weather fix, and if you're up tomorrow morning, if you're commuting tomorrow morning, flip on 10.20 a.m. and listen to me and my buddy Larry talk about whatever it is that we want to talk about. So... It's going to be fun. Uh, so tune in tomorrow morning. It's going to do it for today. <clears throat> um, have yourself a great rest of this Wednesday. I will uh, talk to you again tomorrow morning on the radio and here at Whiteboard Weather. Till then, peace, everyone. Remember to live for today. No one's guaranteed tomorrow. See ya.